Hello, I'm Steve Benway. Many of you will know me as Steve Benway or the Retro Gaming Collector, owner of RetroGamingCollector.com. Um, many of you will also think of me as that guy who plays video games really badly and talks a whole load of crap. All these things are true. Um, what I'm going to show you today is what I'm all about, what my website is about, what this channel was originally about, though it's kind of evolved since then, and that is my collection, my hardware collection to be specific. What I'm going to do is just really walk around the two rooms, because I've sort of expanded out of one room, um, showing you all the consoles, handhelds and computers in my collection. What you will notice is there will be annotations on each, as I point the camera out of system, I will put annotations which will link to other videos that I've made, which will either be system reviews, or if I haven't done one of those yet, a short overview, assuming I've done one, I'm going to be working through those, well, pretty much as of today, uh, which will be like just a brief look and description of a system and to let you have a closer look at it. There will also be links to um, playlists. So if I'm pointing at a, I don't know, ZX Spectrum, there will be a link there to a playlist full of ZX Spectrum game videos that I've made. So you can look at, at the games and see what they're like. And it will just make it nice and easy for anyone who's interested to see other videos, be it about the hardware or software for each individual system. And my God, I'm waffling. So, uh, yes, also, that when, when there is a system review or... or overview there will be links on that video in the information bar to the relevant pages on my website which will themselves feature links for um, custom searches on eBay say you're looking at the spectrum page there'll be a link that says buyers at spectrum on eBay I do encourage you to um, check those out if you're remotely interested in buying one they're region specific um, mainly English speaking countries but, um, well worth a look if you're interested in buying old hardware. Okay, without further ado, much, um, here's the video. Okay then, this is The Study, called that because it used to have loads of books and videos and stuff in it. I've still got a lot of DVDs and Blu-rays. Um, probably these days ought to be called the console room because that's what's in it. Lots of consoles. I shall, uh scan over each one of them so this is a Binatone color TV game mark 10 Binatone TV master mark 6 a grandstand color programmable SD 070 Mattel in television A Commodore 64 GS games console. An Amstrad GX 4000 games console. That is a Philips CDI 210. A Philips G7000 video pack known in the US as the Magnavox Odyssey 2. Under here, along with my camera collection and a stylophone, uh, we've got a couple of Namco plug-and-plays. Oh yeah, loads of Doctor Who stuff. Not really relevant to my collection, but I've got it and that's where it is. Um, a ColecoVision with the, uh, what's it called, module number one, which is the Atari 2600 adapter, and the expansion module number two, which as you can see is a steering wheel and accelerator pedal. I haven't actually tried that yet. I need to get some batteries and try it out because I have got the turbo game to go with it. Milton Bradley Vectrex. Nintendo Virtual Boy and an NEC PC Engine. A 
down here we've got a Neo Geo AES I don't know how well that's going to come out in this light it's a bit dark down there and it's a bit dark uh, the Panasonic 3DO the FZ1 this is just gorgeous at the bottom we have the original PlayStation and a PS1 which was like the revamped miniaturized version that came out much later moving up here we have well it's branded an admin grandstand video entertainment computer what it actually is is the Mark II Fairchild Channel F next to that we've got a Radofin programmable video system it's a 1392 it took a bit of research to find out that there was an earlier model that was made in 1976 and actually predates the Atari 2600 speaking of which Atari 2600s we've got this is a heavy sixer I have a video that describes how to recognize a heavy sixer from your typical Woody I'll link to it there'll be lots of links bobbing around the bottom of this video anyway to various different things there is the 2600 Vader above that is the black model junior that I believe was made and possibly only sold in Ireland and there we have the 26 junior with the wide rainbow below there we have the Atari 7800 and next to that the Atari Jaguar down here oh, we're getting into the dodgy stuff mega what Mega Arcade Action. I was struggling to see there. Looking through the viewfinder and my eyesight isn't good. Yeah, and next to that is the Enjoy Pad. And then uh, a couple of Twin Light Blaster Joy Pad things. Th these are all Famiclones of one type or another. Yeah, and At Games Blaze. It's It's... Well, they would like you to think it's a Mega Drive. And next to that is the Atari Flashback. And they would like to, you to think that it's an Atari. And then next to that is a Ventura Plug and Play. Okay, moving up here. This is like my Nintendo bit. This isn't really a Nintendo. But it's the nearest thing I've got to a Famicom. It's the Scorpion 8 Famiclone. Next to that is the NES. With the um, NES Advantage joystick thingy. Below there we've got the Super Nintendo Entertainment System that I and others like to call the SNES. How lazy is that? And then we've got the uh, Super Game Boy thing there that lets you play Game Boy games in colour on your TV via your SNES. Down here, the Nintendo 64. And next to it is the GameCube. Under there is nothing you need to worry about. Some power supplies, a guitar effects pedal and my netbook. They're just there because they're there. Um the Sega bit then Sega Saturn with a uh, Chinese ripoff of the action replay cartridge that's like memory expansion game hacks and region unlock thingy so I can play multi-region discs on it uh, the 3d joypad that came with Knights and a standard joypad next to it the Sega Mega Drive Mark 1 with the Mark 1 Mega CD and a big bundle of joypads and wires to go with that so a Mark 2 Mega Drive with the Mark 2 Mega CD 
and a 32X and some joy pads and lots of wires and <laughs> power supplies loads of power supplies and down here we have the Mark 1 um, it's a master system with a joypad and a power supply and surprisingly few wires coming back up here then uh, handhelds lots and lots of handhelds Game Boys. Well, actually, we'll start at the start. It's the um, game, the first Game and Watch, known in some regions as Ball, but here in the UK, Nintendo didn't have a distribution deal, so it's branded as Time Out, and the game is called Toss Up. Yeah, interesting name. Um, Mark One Game Boys, Game Boy Pocket couple of Game Boy Colors then we've got the Mark 1 Game Boy Advance couple well three Game Boy SPs and a Game Boy Micro moving over here something that was attempting to compete with Game Boy oh, and to my mind is the most horrible games console on the planet it's the Gamecom and behind it we've got a magnificent, one of the nicest handhelds on the planet is the Atari Lynx Mark II. That is the Lexibook Zeus, strange 16-bit handheld. And then something that some people mistakenly believe is a bad handheld is the Gizmondo. It was a bad company but it's a fantastic handheld. And then above that is the N-Gage. Uh, technically it's a phone. But it plays games. Okay, spot of dodgy editing because I forgot this one. It's the PC Engine GT. Basically it's a handheld version of the PC Engine. Sega Game Gear with the TV tuner and the SNK Neo Geo Pocket Color. Below that is the Bandai Wonder Swan. Next to that is the Quick Shot, um, in other regions, Watara Supervision. And behind that is the Sega Nomad. And sitting behind that, I'll take it out of the case later, is the Milton Bradley Microvision. So that's the handhelds. Um, I shall edit and cut into the other room. So we're in the computer room now. Let's start over here. This is an Apple Macintosh PowerBook. 1400C, very generously donated by Paul Spider an Apple Macintosh SE an Amstrad CPC 6128 and an Amstrad CPC 464 a Commodore PET 8032 an Acorn BBC Micro Model B an Acorn Electron a small cat at my feet a CGL M5 known in Japan as a Sword M5 a Dragon Data Dragon 32 an Acorn Archimedes A3010 a Commodore Amiga 500 a Commodore Amiga 4000 030 a Mattel Aquarius a Hitachi MSX HX10 a Sony Hitbit HB 
75B very generously donated by Ninja Bear Hug. A Tandy Radio Shack Color Computer 2 or Coco 2. Radio Shack TRS-80 Color Computer 1 or Coco. Sinclair ZX Spectrum Plus 2. A Sinclair ZX Spectrum Plus. A Sinclair ZX Spectrum Plus 128K with the um, toast rack on the end. Sinclair ZX Spectrum 48K. Two ZX81s. This one has the 16K RAM pack. This one is standard with 1K of memory. And a Sinclair ZX80. A Commodore 16 or C16. A Commodore VIC-20. The classic bread bin model Commodore 64. and a Commodore Plus 4. An EACA Color Genie EG2000. An EACA Video Genie EG3003. Moving over here, we do have some consoles here. There's an original Xbox a Dreamcast, PS3, these all sit here because I use them a lot as with the PS2 which is shameful to have it sitting with all the computers but I am using it at the moment. Down here we've got the Auric 1 and the Auric Atmos moving up there is the Texas Instruments TI-99 4A. Above that, the Memotech MTX-512. Um, yes, nearly missed it because it it's small and easy to miss. Is this little thing here. It's not actually retro, this is modern, but it works in a very retro kind of way. This is a Fignition very generously donated to me by my good friend Mark. Coming up here we get onto the rare stuff here on this shelf. It is an Enterprise 64. Uh, probably the rarest system or at least the most valuable is the Jupiter Ace. And up here we have some Atari stuff, the 600XL 65 XE behind there is a 520 ST and here I can open it is the Atari portfolio okay dodgy editing time because I completely forgot to include this one and I just I can't forget this it's one of my very favorites it is a Commodore Amiga technically a 1200 it's got a 1200 motherboard in a Micronic Infinitive tower case um, inside here are loads of lovely goodies it's got 32 megs of RAM it's got a, the hard drive I think is only about a one and a half gigabytes. Um, CD writer on a SCSI adapter board which is plugged into a 68060 Blizzard. Is it a Blizzard? It's a Phase 5 Blizzard 68060. Yeah, um, there is a Zorro 2 bus board and into that is plugged a Buddha and Cat Weasel expansion card for high High density floppy drives and extra hard drives. Um, God, there's a high speed. Is it a? Is it a? P 
parallel or a serial card. One of those, I can't remember anyway, it basically made the modem work faster for better internet access. Um, better being a relative term because it was dial-up. Yeah, absolutely lovely machine. I used this for years. It was my main machine for a long time. And, uh, yeah. Commodore Amiga 1200 Tower. Uh, that's just a laptop which I used to run MAME, which is hooked into the big TV over there. And up here, we have a Philips CDI 220 with the... Um, some kind of receptor doofer to go with the light gun for playing Mad Dog McCree. We've got the big box just there. Moving over here, we'll have a bit of a look at the software. Xbox games there. Some Supervision cartridges. And CDI software. A couple of Neo Geo cartridges. Uh, Acorn Electron software, more Acorn Electron software, it's all tapes there. These are TI-994A cartridges, Dragon 32 tapes, some Commodore C16 tapes, Atari 8-bit tapes, um, some ZX81 software there, and a couple of Oric games as well. Uh, I'm not sure what they are. Can't, can't, can't see. You might be able to see better than I can. Some uh, MSX software there, courtesy of Electric Adventures. Some more VIC-20 software and some MTX software as well. Coming down here, TRS-80 cartridges, SNES cartridges. That's that's. Almost all the SNES software I've got, I've got very little in the way of SNES software. Nintendo 64 cartridges. Uh, yeah, shed load of PS3 stuff there. Some N-Gage, some PC Engine. Uh, here we've got some DS and PS1. What have I got over here? That's more Acorn Electron stuff. Um, ColecoVision cartridges, uh, Atari 2600 cartridges, some Atari 7800, uh, Vectrex Multicart. Uh, let's have a look in the middle. We've got a load of with PS1 all the way down to here. Then we've got some, what is it? Spectrum? Spectrum software. In here. Game Boy, original Game Boy. Third take. I dropped these all over the floor and then restarted a game but wasn't pointing at the box. Some Game Boy Color cartridges. Um, original Game Boy, that's good. Steve 28, Steve Ryan, thank you, Steve. And a load of um, Gamecom cartridges. What have we got here? Atari Lynx cartridges. And, oh. GX4000 cartridges and the demo cut. Whoops, God. Yeah, you want to see this, it's really helping you. The demo cartridge from the Gizmondo. Um, let's have a look in here then. PS2, loads of PS2. That is full of Game Boy Advance cartridges. More PS2, Dreamcast. Mega CD, um, Master System cartridges there, and some Game Gear, Genesis cartridges, as opposed to Mega Drive, I run those on my Nomad, some NES cartridges, just there, that's the sum total of my NES collection, it's tiny, PSP, uh, a variety of discs on different systems, very generously donated by Ninja Bear Hug. Um, Mega Drive, loads of, well, quite a bit of Mega Drive there. That whole um, shelf is full of Mega Drive. What do we got down here? Amstrad CPC 464 and a cat. Hello, kids. 
yeah, that's all Amstrad. Coming into this one here, 32X, um, Virtual Boy, Vectrex, uh, Commodore 64. Still, is it? Yes, it's still Commodore 64. I've got a couple of cartridges there. Um, and then we get on to the Spectrum. Yeah, two of my absolute favourite Spectrum games, Jetpack and 3D Death Chase. I love those. And that's all Spectrum all the way down there and a cat. Yeah. She's a very... She's a gaming cat. Or she would be given the opportunity. Right, um, a little bit more software up here. Oh yeah, it's Rock'em Sock'em Robots. Some, uh, can we zoom up there? Some TI-99 for a uh, largely educational stuff. Some Amiga games. Fairchild Channel 4F. A Philips video pack in those black cases. A few Atari 2600 games, uh, Grandstand SD070 stuff, and the uh, Radafin, the one game I got for the Radafin, Master System cartridges, um, Sega Saturn, oh yes, the, the one Atari ST game that I've got, and it's bloody Dizzy, I hate Dizzy, um, Atari Jaguar, Mattel Aquarius, that's the one game I've got for the Aquarius. Some 3DO software. A uh, couple, three Gizmondo games, a couple of GameCube games. Uh, there's a Wii game up there. Courtesy of, I believe that came from. Um, Dino the Legend 87, some snares, and a couple of Bandai Wonderswan games. So that's, I would say that's all the software. I have other software stashed in various places, but that's the stuff that I've got on shelves that I've got room for. So there it is, that's, that's a quick look at everything. What I'm going to do now is pull out various if not all of the systems individually sit them down in front of the camera and talk to you about them a little bit about their history though not too much and and maybe how I came to have them or what I think of them or something you know um, yeah so editing to that bit There's me chucking it all over the floor. That wasn't so clever. Edit. Yeah, edited there, I hope. I just chucked these all over the floor. <clears throat> we have got some uh, Game Boy Color, uh, original game. I'm not pointing at the thing. Mm -hmm.